I'm willing, we're gonna discuss water purification day. Uh, these are the different filters that I've, I've used over the years and what I use now. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the chemical treatments you can also use to purify the water. And uh, if you're a backcountry uh, hunter or you're a backcountry uh, hiker, uh, or you're a survivalist, or you just live in hurricane country where you're going to need to treat your water or filter your water, uh, you'll find this interesting. Uh, basically, there's four major uh, parasites or uh, waterborne pathogens in the water. You've got uh, protozoas, you've got bacteria, you've got viruses, uh, you've got nematodes. Uh, starting off with the <clears throat> bacteria, you've got E. coli, Shingella. There's a whole bunch of magnitude of bacteria in the water that you uh, have to be concerned about. Uh, which can be treated with chemical methods, and we'll talk about that later. You've got viruses, which uh, Hep A, Hep E, um, which basically another thing that you can treat with chemicals in the water. The filters themselves won't filter them out, so you will need to use some of the chemical additives that I've got here, such as chlorine and <coughs> chlorine dioxide, which is my favorite. Uh, nematodes are another thing. They're little eggs. They're hookworms, uh, whatnot, uh, threadworms, uh, pinworms, yeah, you name it. Uh, they're in the water also, <clears throat> and you need to make sure that you filter them out or you boil them out. So basically, what's, how do we go ahead and how do we eliminate those pathogens from the water? Well, one of the ways you can, there's four ways you can do it. One is heat. You can, if you have a way of boiling the water, you can boil the water, uh, carry a little packable stove. You, I do that a lot. Uh, if you don't have a packable stove, uh, you, you just have to figure out a way of campfire or whatever to heat the water. You want to get it to a rolling boil for at least one minute. CDC recommends one minute. At higher altitudes, they recommend you do three minutes. Um, we used to, in the Army, when we were in Africa or wherever we'd be at, <clears throat> we would do five minutes because, you know, Ebola, you know, stuff that's out there, you want to make sure you treat it real well. Uh, so we'd do five minutes. Uh, I think that might be excessive, but out there, that's what we did. One minute. Boil works, three minute boil if it's high altitude. So I'd go for the three minute in between. Uh, that's one way of treating it. The other way you can treat is chemicals. Um, one of the things that we used to use in the Army when, uh, in the 80s was Clorofox. Uh, I still use it. It's a chlorine and a fluctuation unit. If you look, I did another video on it. Uh, this stuff works really well. This is a civilian packet you can buy. It comes 30 packets in a little pouch. Uh, it literally, if you watch my video, it will take the water and it'll cause all the uh, Particles and all the sediment that are in there to coagulate together with some of the uh, nematodes and, and some of the bacteria and everything will cling to that, some of it, and to go to the bottom. Uh, then what you do is the, there's also a chlorine in it, that's what I call it, chloroflox, that's chlorine in it, and another additive which actually kills the viruses and bacteria in there. And then you just want to run it through a filter. <clears throat> this is really effective, uh, it treats really well. My favorite, of course, <clears throat> is uh, chlorine dioxide. These tablets here will kill everything. Uh, some of the older stuff, which I'll talk about later, the iodine treatment tablets you could use back when I first came in the Army back in the early 80s, weren't very effective. Uh, they, they wouldn't kill the uh, cryptosporium, which is in the water from cattle and everything else, and it's, it's in drinking supplies even. Uh, so chlorine dioxide kills everything in the water pretty much. Uh, it's, it's an all-round killer, chlorine dioxide. I love it. You put tablets in your water, and I'll explain how I do it with mine later on. Uh, second one that I like, uh, this one is from Europe, made in Germany. It's Micro 4. It has silver in it and also it uh, has uh, chlorine dioxide in it. Real good tablets, work really well. Um, I recommend those two products. Uh, this one here is uh, chlorine and has silver in it. It's, uh, it's okay, they're cheap, they're inexpensive. If you're in a pinch, you can throw, a, this are 100 tablets in here, so you treat a lot of water with this. Uh, however, without filtration system, I wouldn't recommend this because it doesn't uh, get cryptosporium. Uh, so same along with these. Uh, these basically create iodine. Um, the old school iodine we used to have wasn't good for you. If you're a pregnant woman or you have gout or you have some thyroid problem, um, it would create issues. So this is new stuff. It tirates basically uh, eight grams of, uh, milligrams, sorry, eight milligrams of uh, uh, iodine in the water. And then of course, because of the bad taste, you've got to treat it with the, the um, uh, vitamin C, it's, I um, can't think of it right now, but basically it's body crushed vitamin C tablets in there and uh, it takes the, gives them the flavor, makes it a little less tart, makes it a little less uh, nasty tasting and takes the color out of it. These I don't use anymore. These are old school. They work. You can use them, but they don't, again, kill a cryptosporium. Um, those are chemical additives that you can use and I'll show you later when we get into the different filters, you know, what, what I prefer on those. Um, 
what I use for backcountry, and let me get started first by saying, if you're interested in learning more about the different waterborne pathogens, uh, I'm, one of the certifications I kept from the Army was my paramedic. Uh, so I, was, I was able to attend a wilderness medicine course. I'm not getting paid for this. I recommend this book. Uh, it's Wilderness Medicine, the fourth edition. When I went to the course, it's got more information you possibly uh, take in one day. Um, it'll explain the bloodborne pathogens. It'll explain uh, bacteria and viruses that are in the wilderness. It gives you a lot of uh, field craft things, how to splint different things. Using, you know, everyone knows how to use tree, tree limbs and stuff like that. But it, it shows ski poles, how to do traction with ski poles and stuff that even a novice, someone that's not a paramedic can do. So I highly recommend that book. So moving on, what do I use when I backcountry hunt or when I was in the army? Well, we started getting these. We have, these are, this is the Sawyer brand, it's called the Mini. They're like $20, these will last you two seasons. They, they'll say they'll do 100,000 gallons and they will. Uh, the complete kit comes with a back flushing uh, uh, syringe and also this sack that you fill with water, your contaminated water, you screw it onto this here and you basically squeeze it and you suck out of this end and it's like a straw basically. You don't have to bend over in the water like you had to do with the life straws where you'd bend over and have your butt in the air while you're getting water. This makes it a little bit easier, you can pack it out. Uh, a whole kit, everything combined with this little bag I added is like three ounces, it's lightweight, easy to pack. And it, the thing I like about this is I converted all of my uh, Camelbacks with one of these deals. Uh, these are, made by several companies. Sawyer makes them, Canadine makes them. Uh, you know, they're, they're quite convenient. They hook into your line and they connect like this. So here's how it works. You take your camel back, you cut your line close to your reservoir where you, where you take your water out of, and you put this piece in there and you can disconnect it. And then I'll show you later on the main filtration packs, you can actually hook directly into these and fill your Camelback, this is a small one, this is an old army one I have. It, you can fill this directly through your ding by just taking your bike piece off. Now, the other thing I like about this, going back, not trying to run off on tangents because I have a tendency to do that sometimes. All right, these hold in there pretty good. You can take this, this filter, and you can see it has one end, this is your flow end, this end would you be sucking off of if you were putting it through into this packet. You can run it directly into your line, like so, and into here, and basically convert, I'm not gonna do it right now, it's hard to pull back off. Uh, and you basically put an inline filter into your Camelback. And I've done it to all mine. And you can actually take this piece off, plug that in, just slice your line, put these in, and you can use this mini filter for 20 bucks, use it on your Camelback. So in an emergency situation where you need to have water and you need more than just this, like you're gonna pack out uh, and you need more water, you could fill your Camelback, this is a small one, this is a one and a half liter, you could fill a three, get, three liter whatever with dirty water from the river, from the, the lake, pond, whatever. Put it in here and you could actually filter it as you drink and walk with this. That's one of the things I really like about these $20 filters. Uh, they're inexpensive, they work really well. Um, I highly recommend those for if you're a back country and you're by yourself. You're a solo hunter, awesome. Solo backpacker, awesome. What I use when I go with just me and the wife, uh, I use this right here. Uh, this is the Hiker Pro. Uh, what's convenient about you see I've got the quick connect here so basically I can hook into my bladder and fill it or I can just hook into a canteen uh, comes with an adapter you can take the line go directly into this and fill the uh, small bottles here nail gene bottles uh, this is really compact once you take it apart it folds down this whole apparatus weighs 11 ounces it's less than a pound uh, you get to your site you got this on there and you wanna take and get some water out, you hook this in, put this into whatever your line, or you can hook your this piece directly to it and drink right from it. This has got a filter on the end of it and a weight, and it has a bobber, as I call it, it's actually a float. You drop it down in the water so you're not getting the scum off the top of the water, and you're not getting the sediment in the bottom, so it's hanging and draws your water in. You pump your water, you pull it in, runs through the filter and comes out your line into your deal. This is good for like if you have two people, like for me and my wife or whatever, works great. And you can see I keep everything in mint condition. I clean everything with a five to one ratio of bleach when I get home and water and let dry out in the sun. Your filter just screws out here, comes back in. If this ever gets stuck, they've incorporated these grooves on the handle. To use the handle, you pop this clip out and you can unscrew the filter. You can get that if you buy this with the instructions. All of these filters I have, every one of them, this one's 20. 
The rest of these are all under $100. I highly recommend them. Um, this is the platypus one. Uh, this is a four liter. Uh, this one I recommend if you have, you know, two, three, four people. Uh, it gives four liters of water. You put your dirty water in this reservoir bag. Uh, it filters through this filter here and then goes into the clean reservoir bag. What I've added here is a, a GAC filter. I highly recommend these for anyone. Uh, it's basically granulate activated carbon, charcoal basically. Uh, these last about 79 gallons. And what that does is if you're in an area where there's, uh, say you're up in the mountains and there's been silver mining or whatever, and there's a lot of runoff of water and whatnot, uh, you basically want to get the chemicals out of the water that are you know, pollutants. Your filter's not going to get the chemicals out of the water. However, these charcoal activated, these carbon filters will remove uh, even some radioactive materials out of the water. Uh, they're highly effective and they work great. I recommend you put one, they're 20 bucks. That one there is disposable, you throw it away. Um, I'll show you this one here on the Catadine. This is the Catadine, this is 10 liters, this is four. This 10 liters is like for our family when we go camping. Uh, I've added a, a charcoal filter to the end of it also. What I like about Canadine's filter is this unscrews and you can add the packets of activated carbon to it. So you don't have to replace it every time, a whole new filter, you just buy the activated charcoal uh, carbon. If you're smart, you can do like I do for all my hunting clothes. I use activated charcoal in garment bags. Uh, that my wife washed her bras and whatnot. I used to, I stole them from her. Uh, you put the activated charcoal in, throw it in with your hunting clothes, the activated charcoal carbon draws away the, the human smells for hunting. Anyway, that's a whole nother video in itself. But you can use the big can of that instead of these packets. These packs are convenient though. You're, you're packing it out. You don't have to worry about it. I've added this. Uh, it's a shower head for my girls. They like to take showers out there. They want to be nasty, you know. It's a shower head. It screws on the bottom. And they can stand underneath the thing and take a shower. If you have plenty of water in there, you can do it. Uh, what I want to talk about mostly is what I do for this. Because <clears throat> the instructions on these particular ones tell you the bag opens up. You, you go down to your river, your, your stream, and you scoop up the water, and then it filters through the filter system, like this one filters through there, and then into your bag. The problem is you're taking these and you're sticking them down into the water and contaminating the whole outside of the bag. Now you can dis you should always disconnect your line when you do it. They have quick disconnects. When you're gonna fill the water, disconnect it so that you don't get it on the line, the fresh line going down. The problem is you're, you're getting your bag nasty and dirty, you're getting bacteria on the outside of it. So the companies recommend, okay, let's just wipe it down. Uh, the problem I have with that is uh, it takes a while for the UV rays to kill any uh, bacteria or pathogens on the outside of these bags. And you're also, you're getting your bag in nasty stuff and deteriorating even more and getting the, you know, crud in them and whatnot. What I did is you buy these $5 bags uh, right here, come with a cap on it. This is a 10 liter bag. It's clear on one side, blue on the other. And it folds up real nice and convenient. It weighs like less than half an ounce. Even with this on, it's like an ounce with the strap I added to it. Fill this with your dirty water. If you've got nasty water somewhere, and this is what I do, I'll run this down the water, I'll fill it on. Don't pay attention to this right now because I put this on to filter it later. You fill this with your water, I add the chloroflox if it's real nasty. I let it filter down to the bottom. This bag opens up, and as you can see, it gets almost square when it opens up. This is a new one I'm just showing you. It gets to be a big bag. Your sediment will settle to the bottom of it, and then I add the uh, microspore, I add the uh, chlorine dioxide. The reason I do that uh, is to keep down the amount of sediment and germs that go into the filter. Your filters on both of these, this one here, and that one are like 50 bucks a piece. I think even this one's quite expensive. So what I do is I filter that water. I put the, I, sorry, I'm running off the course here. Put the uh, chlorofox in, coagulate it. I add the chlorine dioxide to it. And I take gauze pads. You can buy any, you don't have to be a permit to get these. You can get them at any uh, medical supply house. They're so cheap. I mean, a whole package like that is like $4. Uh, these work make a great, initial filter. It's, it's similar to what your filter's made out of. So I take a rubber band, I put it over the end of it, and then I pour that into my dirty reservoir. So what I've done here is I've basically done a prior filtering before it goes through the filter, my main filter, and I'm saving that filter so it lasts twice the amount of time. These filters will last twice the amount of time by doing that single step. And I know you're thinking, well, that's expensive using the chlorofox, right? And the Well, actually not. The chlor If you use chlorofox and the uh, Chlorine dioxide, I added the cost there, it's 75 cents per treatment. So 75 cents to treat basically uh, 10 liters of water. 
It's, it's worth it if you're going to save the filter and extend its life. So over the lifetime, you don't spend another $50 each year buying a new filter. You can get two years out of it. And you probably, by the 75 cents per time you've used these, you're probably saving probably at least $30 uh, would be my estimate. I'm not a mathematician, but uh, definitely going to save some money by doing that. I highly recommend you buy these bags. They even make a solar bag similar to this. And it has a screen in it, which is ty uh, tirate or coated with uh, titanium dioxide. It's another agent that helps accelerate the UV rays and helps to uh, kill the uh, bacteria and whatnot in the water. Uh, it's very effective and uh, you can get those bags that are $10. But any clear bag like this, it folds up. Uh, this is a 10 liter, like I said, $5, you can't beat it. And it saves your bag from being dipped into that nasty water. Now, if you are gonna use these bags, you need to dip them into the water. I highly recommend, of course, it, like the corporation says, that you wipe the outside of them down. And then when you do hook it back up, I recommend you make sure that these hose, this is what I've, I've showed in my demonstration, Hook it to your line, pull your line up so that your line is not dangling below this while it's hanging there and you're not using it. And the reason why is if you have that hanging out and let's say it rains, the rain's going to contaminate the outside of the bag. Cross-contamination is going to run that water down. Water runs downhill. It's going to run down to your main line and right into your bag. And you're thinking, well, you know, I'm not concerned about the, the residue on the outside of the bag. Well, considering that for a Giardia, for example, uh, Giardia only takes 10 little spores for you to get uh, gastrointestinal problems and the need to be treated with doxycycline and whatnot. I'm trying not to rattle too much paramedic stuff off. But anyway, you don't want Giardia. So don't let it run down the outside. Cryptosporium, the same thing. You don't want it running down the outside of the line. So wipe the bag down as dry as you can get it. Hang it in the sun. Pull your line up to the side somehow. Hang it to a tree or whatever so it doesn't get, if it rains or it drips down for some reason, that you don't get that uh, cross-reference residue on there. If you're interested more about learning about Giardia, Cryptosporium, all the diseases, again, I recommend that book, uh, Wilderness Medicine. Uh, they'll explain more about the different water treatments and how they work. Uh, they'll explain to you basically uh, how the chlorine works, how the chlorine dioxide works, uh, how it kills. They'll explain the incubation period on Giardia, Cryptosporium, uh, most of the amoebic uh, parasites that are protozoas that are swimming around in the water trying to invade your intestinal tract and cause you all kinds of dysentery and, and different problems. Um, I think I've covered everything on that. Uh, these are all under $100. Uh, this one was $20. I think this one goes on sale for you like $65. These are anywhere from $99 to $79 if they're on sale. They have a 6 liter in this and a 10 liter. I got the 10 liter for the family. This one's four liter. I cannot remember what this costs since I've had this. Um, I think with the filter and all, it's still, they're still under $100 altogether with the, with the carbon filters and everything. And uh, I highly recommend these filters and uh, I hope I covered everything for you. If I hadn't, post something on the bottom and I will uh, add some more to it. Thank you.